Next, green crisps. Why do you occasionally get a green crisp in your bag? Oh, yeah, no, I hate it when that happens. What is that? I think it's just where the potatoes a little bit bruised. Do I need to worry about it? Or no, 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 just... no, no, definitely not. Yeah, I never see a green crisp. They used to be, like, all over the show when I was a kid. What makes a crisp green and why have they become so elusive? I've come to Norfolk to meet farmer Toby Mermigan to find out. Come with me, I'll show yeah. you what we do. Okay. Farmer Toby grows his potatoes exclusively for making crisps. When does the issue of green crisps start? Is it here in the field? Absolutely, because uh, potatoes go green due to exposure to light. This potato, as you can see, has gone green on the top because mm. it's been sitting like that. Right. The green part of the potato is chlorophyll from light exposure, mm -hmm. but it contains a chemical called solanine. Okay. Now, solanine is a toxin. And if you right. eat a lot of it, it will make you feel not very well. Right. Um, so it is actually toxic? It is toxic, okay. yes. Solanine is the same poison produced by deadly nightshade. It acts as a natural pesticide protecting the plants. It may be poisonous, but you'd have to eat the equivalent of one whole large, entirely green potato to feel any ill effects. And let's face it, who's going to do that? Toby's farm supplies a staggering 250 million potatoes each year to a high-end crisp manufacturer. All right, people, hello. Inside the tent, every single potato gets the once-over by a team of sorters. Their sole objective is to spot any substandard spuds, including the green ones. That's his one. OK, there you go. So, a little bit of green on the end of that one, right. which we chuck away. These discarded potatoes get sent off to local farms for animal feed. Only the ones that pass muster are destined to become crisps. That's a lot of spuds. Okay. Yeah. So how many potatoes would uh, go into a typical bag of crisps? One average-sized potato would typically make one 40-gram packet of crisps. But with over 250 million spuds a year, a few sneaky green ones still slip through the net. Have you ever run up it? That's what I want to do right now. But I won't, obviously, because I'm a grown-up. I've come to the crisp factory who buy all of Toby's tatties to see just how they keep those green crisps at bay. The main man here is Chris Bernard. Right. Let's OK. Go. Chris has lots of safeguards to make sure no green potatoes get turned into crisps. So this is what you want to get rid of? Yeah, that's how it's come out. And how are these graded out at this stage? Through the system right as they come in. Once they've been through the machine, they're assessed again by hand, so even the most determined green potato would be hard-pressed to slip under the radar. Then these scrutinised spuds hit the fryers. And there you go. Look at that, it's amazing. The potatoes are sliced directly into the oil to ensure a better class of crunch. But this guy is making sure that we get plenty of oil in between the slices so they don't stick together. It's this part of the process that means they can call their crisps hand-cooked. And I'm going to try my hand at it. What? It's like a workout. Do you want me to do it for Shove a around now, or <laughs> Five out of ten for style, though, but uh, ten out of ten for effort. All right, it's not strictly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I think I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, and they taste great straight out of the fryer. They're but... lovely, aren't they? Millions of crisps then face the ultimate in dud detection. This machine takes pictures of each and every one at the speed of light, rejecting any remaining greenies. So the chances of getting a green crisp in one of these bags is pretty negligible, isn't it? I would seem less than negligible. And even if you do spot a green crisp, remember you'd have to eat dozens and dozens to get a dodgy tummy.